Hey, I'm Roland with Mobile Geeks and we are at Samsung taking a look at the S7 Edge in this case. So this is the new uh, top-end model basically of the S7 range. The difference is in the size uh, compartment and uh, yeah, in, in the fact that it actually has this curved beveled edge around its screen. So you definitely get uh, the edge gesture, gestures and all that stuff again. Um, other than that, we are using a 5.5 inch screen on this device, so it's a tad bigger than the 5.1 inch S7. It does have the same resolution at 2560 by 1440. It's a super AMOLED panel. And as you can see, they are using this AMOLED panel to show you the time, for example, using their new always on display technology. So what they're doing is basically they only light up the pixels that are needed to show you uh, the time in this case. There are other options you can have uh, calendar items for example show up there's different design different designs for the calendar or uh, the clock in this case it does move around the screen a bit but it always stays on and it only uses these these few pixels that are lit up right now to show this data that way they use about one percent uh, of the battery every hour of displaying this so basically you should last up to well 100 hours right using this in this case um, other than that, we have, again, a 5.5 inch screen. Under the hood is the new Exynos 8890, which is their new octa-core clocked, clocked at up to 2.1 gigahertz, I believe. And this thing is definitely super fast. And as you have already seen from the uh, benchmarks that linked out earlier, it should clock in just around the uh, 135,000 point mark on the Antutu benchmark, for example. So that goes very well in that case. We have four gigs of RAM, 32 or 64 gigs of flash storage in this case. And another feature they have actually brought back is the SD card slot that is integrated with the uh, SIM card slot that's up top on the device. Other than that, you will uh, also get faster quick charging for example you will also have a actually a heat spreader integrated so in this device is a heat pipe that is supposed to transport the heat that the CPU generates away from the chip and keep the device cool even when playing games while gaming performance wise Samsung is saying they have increased the CPU power around 30% and they increased the GPU power by uh, up to 64% I don't know what measures they're using I guess their benchmark marking it and then are taking these values to come up with that. Um, other than that, we have an eight megapixel camera on the front. I believe on the back is the new 12 megapixel camera, but we'll get back to that in a few seconds. But let me just show you this from the side. As you can see, yep, there's barely a camera hump there. So this only protrudes uh, 0.46 millimeters out of the casing. So that's just very, very little uh, camera hump right there. Uh, it probably couldn't fully fitted in yet, but I guess next generation it's going to be fully flush in this case. Uh, we get this metal framing again, so this is definitely metal in this case. There are three colors. This is the black version. There's going to be a gold and a silver version too. You always end up with this glass cover on the back, and as you can see, this is a major fingerprint magnet. The corners are slightly uh, bent on the sides or curved on the sides too, so that's yeah, that's their new design language. You also get this slight dithering in the cover back here. So there's a, like a, a small stripey pattern that you will be able to see if you look close enough on these devices. Other than that, you have the home button at the uh, on the front right here. So you can again use the fingerprint reader. There is your standard physical uh, multitasking and back button again on these devices. And on the side right here on the left are the two separate volume buttons. On the bottom, you will end up with a single speaker. You get a micro USB 2.0 port right there. That is a design choice in this case. They are saying that USB 3.0 or type C doesn't help much uh, while transferring data yet, but uh, also the IP68 uh, certification that this device is having for the first time in the Galaxy range or of the, the standard Galaxy model, uh, S model range, um, plays a role in that. So it's obviously easier to make this waterproof using a USB 2.0 port, I guess. And you will also have the headset jack at the bottom right there. On top is where the nano SIM and your SD card go, plus you always have the noise canceling mic on top. On the right, there's also your power button. 
So now let's take a quick look at the camera. As you can see up here, it has a 12 megapixel resolution. In this case, 4K video is certainly possible. Uh, but what they're now doing is, as I said, they have their new um, dual pixel autofocus. So that's pretty much the same focusing technology that my camera from Canon is using right here. And as you can see, it is very fast on the focusing and it is mostly super accurate. So it doesn't take much time to actually focus and it's also very, very accurate and very fast in this case. Uh, so that's a great new addition because they're now having two photo diodes on every pixel. The pixels are 1.4 micrometers each and the aperture on this is 1.7. So it's definitely going to result in better pictures. They're saying that their um, brightness on the overall brightness on the pictures has gone up 95%. So you should definitely be able to take some pictures even when it's almost dark. So you need very little light on this. So yeah, that was just a very quick look at the Samsung Galaxy. S7 Edge in this case. We're going to move on to the S7 in a second. Let me just quickly tell you that this thing has a massive battery for a device that is 7.8, I believe, millimeters thick and weighing in at just 156 grams, which is pretty light for a device uh, that is at 5.5 inches. Um, back to the battery, this has a 3,600 milliamp hour battery, so that's absolutely massive and they're managing to cram a lot into this very, very slim and ergonomic casing in this case. Um, there's a bunch of new features in the software too. So you will have these new app edge or extended app edge functionality. You can have uh, people's, people in here. You can also get this kind of stuff right here. So they, there are new edge apps in which you will be able to see more because it's now two lines basically. That So the whole thing has grown a bit. They're working on that. Another nice interesting addition is the so-called game launcher. The game launcher will allow you to actually have a bunch of different uh, settings to switch around with during gaming. So you will end up being able to, for example, not only launch uh, games from a ranking through over all the uh, other Galaxy users or all the Galaxy users playing game, games will show up or they're taking the metrics from all the Galaxy users playing uh, to give you lists of most popular games, uh, the games with most users, the games that are most, most active right now, for example. But they will also have some features in this device that will allow you to, for example, record your gaming session. So you just swipe in the, from the left and get this gaming launcher uh, to actually, yeah, just start or stop a recording. You take, can take screenshots. Uh, you can also switch from full screen to not full screen and lock the device, for example, do all these kind of fancy things. Uh, also, Samsung is saying that they have been able to give you a longer or maximum performance in the gaming sector on these devices because they have uh, integrated that heat spreader I was talking about or the heat pipe, hype, heat pipe I was talking about. Uh, for you US users, this device will also be available running the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, but that is supposedly only happening in select markets. We don't know yet if it's going to be the US that is going to have the Snapdragon, which is probably the case because of the network support there that is needed over there. Uh, but in Europe, it's definitely going to be the Samsung Exynos 8890 only.